Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're within the UK shooting scene, you most likely would have heard of the Offensive Weapons Bill. And if you've been living under some kind of rock for the last few years, the Offensive Weapons Bill led to the banning of Mars Action Rifles and Lever Release Rifles as well. The Home Office, the police and the government including Nabus, decided that the guns had a, a higher rate of fire than them, that they were comfortable with and it, it was too close to the already banned semi-automatic four-bore rifles. And they decided that it would be safer to remove these from private ownership from FAC holders despite them never being used in crime at all. Not a single recorded incident with any of these guns but they you know felt that it would be making the public safer now that received royal assent in may 2019 well over a year ago now we do now know that there is going to be compensation but they still haven't released any details on what that compensation will be so bearing in mind that the offensive weapons bill still fully hasn't been uh, uh, implemented and there are people still scratching their heads in this limbo state of they can't sell their guns, they can't get rid of their guns, they just have to sit there and wait patiently to be told what they're going to be paid for their, for their property and then have it taken away from them. There are now rumours of an offensive weapons bill 2.0 and I find it quite funny making this video because to my knowledge I was the first one to start talking about the uh, the original offensive weapons bill back in 2017 and I actually received a lot of flack when I did that. At the time it was a lot of speculation and forewarning this video is going to be a lot of speculation as well but pretty much everything that I speculated on three years ago turned out to be correct and maybe the people that were so critical of my scaremongering three years ago might want to set up and listen to this. So this has come to my attention actually through the 50 Cal Society. They put out a post a week or two ago saying that the government was looking into increasing the security measures for 50 caliber rifles. And again, if you remember for the original offensive weapons bill, they were trying to ban 50 cals. They were thankfully unsuccessful but now they're trying a different angle. And I believe their tact is gonna to be to make it so difficult, to, to make it so expensive uh, and just so arduous to, to own a 50 cal that people give it up. And again, the rumors from what people have said and what people seem to know at the moment is that they are going to make the security measures above that required for an RFD. Now. Granted, if you're fortunate enough to be able to afford and even just shoot a 50 caliber rifle, you've probably got a spare bit of cash that you can upgrade your security measures. But still, that could be some major, major work and some pretty significant amounts of money to bring it up to scratch. How many people are potentially going to give up their 50 cal? And certainly, how many people in future are not going to be able to uh, to get a slot for a 50 cal because they simply can't get the security arrangements in place if they do bring this in. However, with everything going on as well, it might seem a little bit of a coincidence, but I don't know if, if, if I've learned anything over the last uh, five or six years of running this channel that there are very few things as, uh, as such as coincidences when it comes to the orchestrated attempt of restricting firearms owners even further. You remember that the Times has put out a significant attack against Section 1 shotguns, against mini rifles, and of course the gun control network most recently described them as mass casualty weapons. Again within the last couple of weeks the gun control network have seemed to be very very busy contacting a number of local newspapers up and down the country and with these local newspapers running these copy and paste articles pretty much word for word trying to scare the public that apparently we own these mass casualty weapons here within the UK and that they are similar to those used within the mass shootings elsewhere be that the US, New Zealand, so on and so forth. So 
it doesn't really take much to think that if they are coming again for another round of restrictions or bans, it's been pretty much pretty much confirmed by the 50 cow society that they're going to bring in or try and bring in further security measures for the 50 cows. And with all this attention at the moment and ramping up of uh, sort of this anti-agenda and bias and misinformation around section one shotguns and multi-shot uh, firearms or weapons or, or whatever, I would not be surprised if there is going to be an attack on section one shotguns, on high capacity uh, rifles, and then what else? We all know that they've been eyeing up air guns for a very long time. We all knew once they passed the law in Scotland that it would pretty much only be a matter of time until uh, England and, and Wales brought in further restrictions or, or even licensing. Uh, and you know, really the world is their oyster on what guns and, and what restrictions they, they want to ban or, or bring in. So I think for me, this is just a, a warning flare to put out there like I did three years ago that I'm, I'm sort of putting one and one together and I think I'm almost getting two that the offensive weapons bill 2.0 is is looming and and I feel very much like it is it is coming and over the next six to twelve months a lot is going to become clearer now uh, in, a, in a separate video and in a, in a separate uh, sort of matter. I have been in in contact with the uh, director of communications and public affairs, Christopher Graffius of Basque, and I have asked him directly if whether the legal fighting fund, the seven-figure legal fighting fund that Basque have put aside after cancelling the legal expenses insurance, whether that has anything to do with any pending consultation. He's denied that. Personally, I'm not so sure. We know that there is a lot that goes on behind the scenes. We know that there is a lot of closed door meetings and we know that these organizations are made aware of potential further restrictions or consultations well before it ever is released publicly. Uh, and, and I can see both pros and cons of doing that. Personally, I think we should be gathering as much support and sort of creating as much awareness about it as soon as they become aware. At the end of the day, why are they consistently trying to work with the government? It didn't work last time. It was a miracle that 50 cows were saved, but all the working and all the closed door meetings and, and, and handshakes and you know attempted negotiations did absolutely nothing for Mars or lever release, and I feel that it's pretty much a futile attempt, attempt trying to play by the, the government or the, the police's game and having these, uh, these consultations when they have pretty much already made up their mind. So, I don't know. Let me know what you make of it in, in the comment section below. I would strongly advise start writing to your, uh, your MPs, start getting in contact with your uh, your organisations, if you're members of, of any organisations, be that Countryside Alliance, be that Basque, be the, the NRA, be that the UK PSA, I strongly feel that there is going to be an offensive weapons bill uh, 2.0. I strongly feel that it's it's almost certainly going to have further restrictions for 50 cows. It's I, I'm pretty certain it's going to come after high capacity 2.2 semi-automatic rifles and section 1 high capacity shotguns and most likely air guns and things like that are going to be thrown in as well. So so get writing, get talking about it, get people made aware of it because the only way that we have any chance of defending against further restrictions like this is by raising your MPs awareness, is by getting them to stand up in parliament and oppose these these laws that time and time again have been shown not to have any effect on the reduction of gun crime. Let's not forget that within a population of around 70 million, we have about 20 gun deaths a year, the majority of which done by illegally uh, held firearms. And again, the, the most popular firearm used in, in any sort of crime or any firearm offense is a handgun, which we of course banned 20, 30 years ago. So it doesn't have an effect. They are eroding a perfectly legitimate and, and fast growing sport just for the sake of being seen to be doing 
something, whether or not it is actually solving any problem whatsoever. So again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Get writing to your MPs, get writing to your organisations. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. And to try and raise as much awareness about this, please give the video a share amongst your friends in Messenger or on your own social media channels. Make sure as well you're subscribed for future updates and future videos. And as always, guys, I hope to see you soon.